The seller of this $2,000 Digital Storm gaming laptop said that the manufacturer wanted over $900 to fix it. We're gonna open it up and see what's wrong and if it's something we can fix. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. Now the seller said that the keyboard on this laptop didn't work and that the keyboard connector was bad. I also noticed though, this corner right here on the screen where this hinge is, it's, uh, you can't really see it. Let me see if I can get that on camera. Yeah, you can't really get it on camera, but uh, this bezel is kind of popped up right here. So there might be an issue with this hinge or screen down here too. I'm not gonna try and turn it on yet. I think I want to get it open and have a look at the inside to see what we're dealing with as far as this connector before we try and turn it on. So I'm gonna be using my iFixit ProTech Toolkit. This one's great because it's got a whole entire bit set and then it's got pry tools over here, more pry tools here, suction cup, and an ESD wrist strap. So it's always good for laptops as well because this cover actually acts as a screw tray so you can put your screws in the little grid right here and they don't slide around too much. So that's what I'm gonna be using to open this up. I think we need a Phillips. We'll try a Phillips zero, a little small. Go with a Phillips number one, much better. So in order to keep these screws straight how they go, I'm actually going to put a screw right up on here. And this will tell me the approximate position of how they go when I go to screw this back on. So now I'll put the side screws right here, the next screws over here, and these top ones right up here. And now the screws are in the approximate position they go in when we go to put this cover back on. Just have to make sure not to bump that case and knock it onto the ground. Okay, so hopefully this will come up now. Might need a bit of a pry tool. I think I'm gonna use one of these guys. Then I can just get down on the edge here and not break my fingernail off. There we go. And now we got the back cover off. Okay, let's see what we have going on in here. So there's the keyboard connector. Is that the keyboard connector? It looks like it. Maybe it's the keyboard connector on the other side of the board. It probably is because that means we have to take the whole board out. I'm sure that's what we're gonna have to end up doing here. But this connector, at least so far. Oh, did they super glue this? Oh no, I think they might've super glued it. That's not a good idea. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh no, what did we get into? Did they super glue any of the other connectors though? Not that one. That one wasn't even locked down. Uh, what else do we have here? Fan connectors are good. Okay, so remove super glue without causing harm to the plastic. Not sure if that's possible. Okay, but first things first, let's get this battery disconnected. We know we need to do that right away. If we leave the battery connected, then when I'm poking and prodding around in here, I can cause two connections to connect or two points to connect and that can cause a big problem. I can short things out on the board or the battery. So I gotta figure out what to do with this super glued connector. So I'm gonna figure that out and then I'll start filming again. I love iFixit tool sets. I think they're some of the best tools you can get for precision tools, but iFixit also offers tons of parts and also repair guides right on their website. Right now they're having a great sale on parts. So no matter what you're working on, if you're trying to fix your electronics, go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix and see if they have the part there that you need. iFixit parts are all tested and they have a great warranty. Sometimes I buy parts from iFixit just because I know they've been tested and they have a great warranty. There's not a lot of websites out there that offer reputable parts for your electronics, so I highly recommend iFixit. I'll put a link in the description that'll take you right there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put some isopropyl alcohol on this. IPA doesn't usually cause problems with plastics, so I'm gonna give it a good soaking. A lot of times IPA will loosen super glue, kind of weaken it a little bit. So I'm hoping that's what we can do here. I use IPA a lot for removing, you know, other adhesive. I just usually don't have to deal with super glue. I could also heat it. Heat also does release super glue, but I might have to heat it so much that it would cause some problems. So I don't really want to heat it because it could melt this uh, ribbon cable. Ribbon cables usually are pretty heat resistant though, so we might be able to get away with that. But let's try the easy stuff first and the stuff that's less likely to cause problems. 
Yeah, it is, it is loosening a little bit. So we're gonna add some more. Just keep that soaked on there. It's gonna be a problem with this cable though. I think we're probably gonna have to replace this no matter what. And I still wonder if the connector on the keyboard is fine or whether it's just this connector right here. So the other thing is we might be able to pull this connector out even with that locking tab down. I'm not gonna pull on it super hard. Oh, I feel like this is probably just super glued in there. So that would be why they said they needed to replace this connector is because the ribbon cable is super glued into it as far as... I don't know if the repair shop did this or the guy that I got this from. I don't know if he's the one that did it. Clearly somebody did, but there's, there's no way of really knowing who did it. Hopefully not the repair shop, but some repair shop. I've seen some pretty dumb stuff from repair shops and, and just the, the user of the electronics as well. So I think what I'm gonna do now while that is soaking is remove the heat sinks off of this and replace the thermal paste. And also I'm gonna take the whole motherboard out and take a look at the other side and just make sure there's no other problems that we don't know about on this thing. Anytime I get something like this, especially with a super glued connector, it kind of makes me wonder if they did anything else to it. So one way we can check for that is just take the whole thing apart and have a look at all the parts. All right, and now with the fan and heat sink screws removed, we can remove this. Okay, and we do have fresh thermal paste on here. And it looks like fresh thermal pads, so, I mean, that's good. I feel like maybe what happened is somebody wanted to put new thermal paste and thermal pads on, and in the process of that, maybe messed up the connector for the keyboard and then super glued it back on, hoping that that would fix it. Clearly it did not. And then, of course, I bought it. So I've just been soaking this connector more. I'm just gonna keep soaking it with IPA. And maybe by the time we have all the rest of the screws out, this thing will be ready to move. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, now with that loose, we can flip this over. Okay, so. We have this keyboard connector. This connector wasn't even connected at all over here. That's interesting. Well, let's see if this connector is good. Okay, that connector is good. Oh, this ribbon cable might have a problem though. So if you look right here, somebody screwed a screw in here that was too long and it screwed right down into the ribbon cable. I'm guessing that's probably part of our problem but let's get this on our microscope and take a look at that and see if that actually broke some traces or if that's just an indentation. So this is what we're looking at right here, trying to determine if those traces are broken or whether that's just an indentation. And I don't know, looking at it, I don't see how those traces could not be broken. Like that's just, that's, a pretty big indent right there. And I think, I'm pretty sure those have to be broken. So the problem with this ribbon cable possibly was this and not even that there was any bad connection or any other problem other than they used the wrong screw and screwed it down too far and it screwed into this ribbon cable for the keyboard. That might be the origination of the problem they were having, and it could be the only thing wrong with this laptop. But in order to test that, we still have to get this ribbon cable off of this connector. That's just gonna be pretty difficult to do. You can see just this glue everywhere, why? I mean, we can get a bunch of it off, but the problem is it's gonna be all down inside this connector. Let's see if we can put any pressure at all on it. Eh, there's not much movement there. Oh, there's a little bit. There's a little bit of movement there. Try getting a little bit of a flatter tool in there. My spudger I've had for so long, it's getting a little blunt on the tip. Okay. The problem is gonna be getting this thing off without breaking it. I mean, it's already mostly broken, so with the super glue under it, but it would be nice if we could just fix this thing and not replace this connector, but 
I'm not sure what the chances of that are. And then I have to see if I can find another one of these ribbon cables laying around somewhere. If not, I'll have to buy that. I would really prefer to not replace this, this connector, but I mean, they're not the most difficult things to replace ever, but they're not easy. Okay, I'm just gonna keep soaking this thing and see if we can get that adhesive to loosen enough so we can get that locking tab up. And in the meanwhile, I gotta see if I can find another one of these ribbon cables. And I just found out why this connector was super glued on. I should have known it was super glued on because somebody already tore it off once. And we've got one trace there and one trace there that might be faulty. This one looks like it's missing a pad, so we're probably gonna have to fix that somehow. But let's see the bottom of this connector. Okay, we might actually be able to use this connector again, assuming we can free it up. I mean, this locking tab's got to be freed up, and it might not be worth it. I'm, I'm actually going to see if I just have another one of these on a different laptop board around somewhere. And if I do, I'm just going to use that. We can clean up this board and install the new connector and the new ribbon cable if I can find one. So I'm going to try doing that, and then we definitely do have to address, I think, just this one right here. But that could also be a problem. And I think I found a connector that's going to work perfectly for this. It looks like the exact same connector. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find a ribbon cable. So I'm going to have to see if I can fix up this ribbon cable. But for now, let's get this board prepped. We have one missing pad here and one missing pad here. And all of this is super glue. So I'm going to use my soldering iron to remove this super glue. And then I'll also reflow all these pins right here. And then we'll get to repairing these traces. Okay, and now we have this pad placed and this pad placed. Now I need to come through and solder these on so we make a connection between the trace on the board and this copper trace right here. And then after that, I'm gonna put a little bit of conformal coating over this part and this part. That just helps strengthen it. And then it's gonna be time to put on the new connector and hopefully these pads will stay in place long enough that we can get them soldered on. Okay, and here is the new connector. Need to make sure everything matches up. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so now with that lined up, I'm gonna get my soldering iron out and probably mess it all up and have to realign it 13 different times. But I'll try and cut most of that out and just show you the parts where I actually get it where it needs to be. And here we go, the connector is now soldered on. I have went through and checked each of these connections. None of them move. So that means that they're all correctly soldered onto the board. I did have to come through and add a wire here. That one piece of trace wire that I already installed was just too tiny, and I was just not able to arrange it so it would connect very well right here. It looks like there's a bridge right here. There's really not. And other than that, I think this connector is ready to go. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more, make sure there's no flux in anything. But now we have to see if we can repair this ribbon cable. I think I'm just gonna melt it with the soldering iron. That will enable the super glue to all melt, and hopefully that will preserve this ribbon cable because this is the only ribbon cable I have. I looked through all my other laptops for parts, and I couldn't find one that was like this, so hopefully we can fix it. So here is the connector that is super glued on. I'm going to use my soldering iron and just work on burning this off. Hopefully that will preserve the ribbon cable and remove all of the connector as well as the super glue. I'm gonna be using a fume extractor because this is gonna be disgusting. Burning plastic is never a good idea, but in this instance, I don't have another choice, so I'll be using a strong fume extractor just to make sure it sucks up all those fumes.
I really don't think this is going to work, but I have the connector off at least. I'm not sure what we're going to do about this. I'm going to try sanding some of this plastic off and get it at least smooth, and then we'll inspect it and see if it's something I think we can save or not. All right, we've got it cleaned up a little bit, but unfortunately, I think this cable is just too damaged. Got a bunch of damage over here, which is going to make it so it's going to be really hard to get in the connector. We got some damaged uh, traces here. And then on this side, we've got some heat damage here. And you can see part of it is just disintegrating away. So I just don't think this ribbon cable is going to work, which means I'm going to have to get another one of these somehow. But for now, I think I have an idea that might actually get it working at least enough for us to test and see if this ribbon cable is the only problem. So I was able to find this ribbon cable right here that is much shorter than it should be, but it might be enough for me to reposition this board on here and it might be enough for us to at least test and see if the display, if the keyboard is working, not the display. I mean the display too, but mainly the keyboard. So we would need to put this right here and this cable plugs in fine right there. I think we can get the display. Yep, we can get the display in there. So we do need to get the battery installed, which we can plug in right there. And then we also need to install this on the bottom side. Looks like it goes right here. Okay, so before we get that on there, let's plug that in. Almost put that one in upside down. There we go. Okay, so we have all that so far. Okay, so now we just need to connect the battery and then somehow get this rigged up in a way that we can turn it on. Obviously, we don't have the heat sink on, but I just want to test it enough to see if that keyboard is working, so I don't think that's too big of a deal. So we have all the cables hooked up. We have the battery hooked up. All we need to do is plug in the power supply cable and then just see what happens. I just want to get this thing on enough to see if the keyboard's going to work. That's all we need to do here. Makes me nervous having the, the board on the case like this, but there is a covering over the back of the board, so that should be fine. We shouldn't get any shorts that way at least. Okay, there we go. Now I need to see if it's getting power and then we can try and turn it on and see what happens. Okay, and we have 19.5 volts in. That's good news. Let's check and see if we have power going into the battery. 16.3, okay, that all looks good. Now, we need to figure out how we can open this thing up without messing anything up to see if, oh, we got lights. We got lights on the keyboard. Okay, but how can I lift this up? Oh, there we go, look at that. Okay, very strategically, batteries being held in, and there we go. Okay, so I think that means that the keyboard is working, although I am going to try and turn it on, even though I probably shouldn't. Where's the on button on this thing? There we go. Oh, the on button's not connected. <laughs> okay, there we go. This is janky. I definitely don't recommend doing this, but I want to see if this keyboard is gonna do anything when we try and type on it or anything like that. Okay, let me check the battery power now. Okay, we still got 15 volts in the battery. So let's see if we can get this thing to turn on and then see if we can test the battery or test the keyboard after that. And on button. Okay, it's coming on, I think. I'm going to plug in the power just to make sure we have plenty of power. And just putting my hand over this board, I feel it getting warm, so it makes me nervous having this thing not having the heat sink on, but I'm also not sure how I can do any of this with the heat sink on. This might be the end of the road for testing on this one. And I think we're at a dead end on this Digital Storm gaming laptop. 
I think maybe I have it working, but there's no way to really know for sure without being able to get this ribbon cable. I've looked online and I just can't find it anywhere, at least anywhere that looks reputable. And so at least for now, I'm gonna call this maybe fixed, but I can't say for sure. I really wish companies like this just put out a parts list and made parts available for people like me because this would be a very cheap fix, a little bit difficult replacing that connector, but it at least wouldn't be expensive. In my opinion, this is definitely not something that should cost $900 to fix. This is something that should cost maybe a hundred or two, including all parts and labor. If I ever do find this ribbon cable, maybe I can do a follow-up video to see if this is truly fixed or not. Either way, thank you to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching it, and I hope you have a good one.